good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the January 4th, 2021 Berlin Select Board meeting. Um, with us is Flo Smith, John Quinn, Justin Lawrence, and also with us is Tom Badowski, it's uh, acting administrator, and Diane Isabel, treasurer. Uh, additions or changes to the agenda? Tom? Uh, public comment? Hearing none. Treasurer's report, Diane? Um, actually, everything I have is in the um, in the agenda. Okay, and we'll skip right along to the auditor's report. Linda. Good evening. I don't know if you guys have all seen the draft. Okay. Did yep. anybody have any questions before I get started? No. Nope. Okay. Um, I'm going to skip to page 10, which is basically the balance sheet as if the town were a for-profit entity. Um, the first column is um, basically all of your funds except for your um, proprietary funds, your two water and I forget the technical name of the other fund. Water um, pollution. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, as you can see at the bottom, they both have a little over 3 million of net assets um, and a little over a million for both of them for unrestricted net assets. Um, if you skip to page 10, I'm oh, sorry, 11, the next page, um, it's basically the profit and loss if, of the town if it were a for-profit entity, which means it includes all the long-term long debt, the capital assets, all of that. Um, for the year, the governmental activities had a profit of about $151,000, and the proprietary funds had $181,000. For a change for the year. Um, the next page, Exhibit C. From Exhibit C on is basically the way you guys normally look at your, your reports, um, which is not the full accrual, it's a modified accrual. Um, you, know, you don't include the debt or the capital assets or any of that on the balance sheet in this reporting. So on this, um, you show the major funds separately, which is the first column. The general fund is the only one that's considered a major fund. All the other funds are all lumped together as non-major in the second column. Um, for the major fund, for the general fund, you ended up the year with a fund balance of $1,580,000, of which 931,000 of that is unassigned. The rest of it is either considered prepays or it's in inventory or it's restricted by the donor or grantor, or the townspeople have voted on it, and that's what's considered committed funds, or you guys as a select board had assigned some of the fund balance for specific projects, and that's what the assigned balance is on there. And the detail for all of those amounts are on page 39. Um, okay, the next page of significance is page 14, which is basically the profit and loss for the town, um, the way you guys would normally look at your budget reports. Um, you had an excess of revenue over expenses for the general fund of 212,000. Once you add in the loan proceeds and a little bit of funds you had from a sale of uh, asset that was sold, you ended up with a net increase for the year of $366,000, which results in your ending fund balance of $1.58 million. Um, the other non-major funds, which are included on schedules one and two, um, uh. so shows that you had um, $203 of revenue, which is basically interest earnings, and then $15,000 of expenses, which I believe was a donation um, to the Vermont Rail Trail, leaving you with a net loss of 14797 for the year and an ending fund balance of about 98000 
Um, page 16 is the start of Exhibit G, which is your budget to actual for the general fund. And here you can see that your revenue um, was over budget by $62,000 for the year. 30 of that is being more of the pilot money and 32,000 being property taxes. And most of that 32,000 is the de decrease in property tax revenue at August 31st this year compared to last year. Um, because that's the deferred when you decrease it, you're adding that to your revenue. So that's what most of that property tax increase is. It's the timing of when the funds have come in after year end. Um, state of Vermont property tax, or state of Vermont revenue was over budget by almost $82,000. So total revenue was over budget by $192,000. Um, your expenditures, most of the accounts were pretty close to budget. Um, in total, of all your general government accounts, um, you were under budget by 51,000. So you were pretty close there. Um, the police department was under budget by 53,000. Um, some of that had to do with policing grants, which was an unbudgeted expense, but also has revenue that is unbudgeted as well. Um, but the, the salary accounts for those were where most of that over budget was from. Um, the highway ended up with a $28,000 over budget spending and most of that has to do with the resurfacing the gravel that was over budget by 25,000. The rest was a little over one spot and a little under in some other spots but um, and then for your capital outlays you were under budget by 43,000. I'm sure that was due to the timing of COVID and everything that hit. Um, so overall before, um, just for your regular operations, you were uh, for the good um, by 211,000, which is better than what you had budgeted because you budgeted uh, level funding. And again, when you add in the loan proceeds in your sale of your asset, you ended up with a surplus for the year of 366,000. Um, if we skip to page 23, that are your, that's your proprietary funds, your water pollution fund and your water division fund. That's, that shows basically your balance sheet for that. Um, you'll see on there that the water division fund has a negative unrestricted net position um, because what's invested in capital assets Basically, your your capital outlays minus your debt and your retainage payable leaves you with a negative one hundred and eight thousand. Um, the next page is basically the profit and loss for those two funds. Um, as you can see, the water pollution fund has an operating income of two hundred and twenty three thousand, and your water division is a net income of forty two thousand. But after your interest expenses and, and such, you end up with 234 as a profit for the water pollution fund and a deficit of 53,000 for the water division fund. Um, page 39 is where I was saying that shows the breakdown of your your committed fund balance, your assigned fund balance, and then your restricted funds and showing you what that's all, what you have left at the end of the year that's earmarked. And then page 46 um, is the start of the balance sheet and the P&L for those non-major funds, which is the conservation fund, the asset forfeiture, the Montpelier Filtration Fund, and then the Bike Path Fund. 
and those combined ended up with a fund balance of 97,000. Um, the governance letter that we send along with that, we're required to send that and hit certain topics, um, you know, as to whether or not we had any findings and whatnot, whether we had any difficulties, you know, working with the staff during the audit, and which we did not have any of those. Um, on page two of that, we list kind of the, there was a few things that weren't necessarily on the books right, probably because the amounts were so little, it wasn't, they weren't adjusted, um, but there were a few things like unreported accrued interest, you know, um, compensated balances didn't have FICA tax included on it. Um, the retainage payable wasn't picked up on the, uh, the water pollution fund. Um, and then the current year effect of some of the same things that didn't get recorded last year, because they didn't get recorded last year, the effect, it affects this year's income statement. Um, but that was it. We didn't have any findings. That it, was a, it was an unmodified opinion again this year, which is the best kind you can have. So, any questions? Diane, the only question I have is um, you were going to talk to the auditor about our conversation last week around the restriction of surplus money. Yes, which I did. Okay, so Linda and I did speak. Of course, Linda can't give legal advice, but uh, we did talk about it. Um, as far as what you were saying is, is having like um, like a revenue item that would be used in the uh, undesignated funds. And um, I do believe that that is, we could do that. That should not be an issue. And I, you know, I've looked at some of the other towns, what they've done. And although they didn't do it exactly the way you were talking about, um, I think that is, it is doable. So based on everything we've discussed with the budget so far, nothing, nothing seems undoable. I, I guess more like whether it's paying off everything right. we've talked. Yep, it's just a matter of the way we, you know, show it as an entry. So Perfect. we, you know, so we, you know, we're doing, you know, bottom line, it comes out, you know, either it comes out after it comes out, before or whatever. There's entries that you can make that will that will make it work for us. We'll still be using the same funds in the same way. It's just reporting a little bit differently. Okay, great. Thank you, Diane. Linda, question for you. There's there's discussion of a need of a single audit of next year's. Is that any different than this audit procedure this year? Yeah, there's more work that's involved with that, um, which I'm sure you're aware that if if you spend more than 750,000 of federal dollars in a year, that's when a single audit is required. Um, but yeah, there's a lot more um, compliance um, checking that goes along with that. Basically making sure what your controls are, you know, how you're overseeing the funds, whether you're following all of the um, requirements depending on the CFDA for the grants that you get because they have each have different requirements that are revolved, involved, um, and then it's us, you know, checking all of that to make sure that those were all done. And there is a separate report in the schedule of federal financial um, expenditures that goes along with that that has to get re reported. And the driver of that is our paint turnpike north sewer improvement project, which is using the USDA funds. Right. Thank you. Any questions, more questions for Linda? No. Thank you very much, Linda. You're all set with me? Yep. All right. Have a good night, everybody. You, you too. too. Happy New Year. All right. Thank you.
having had Linda here, um, a motion to approve the audit. So moved. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, okay, Tom, Fisher Road uh, Colbert Financing. Folks, uh, early this afternoon, a draft application from the State Infrastructure Bank. Um, and it's what we've discussed in the past. Uh, the uh, project cost of a little over $1.3 million, of which 20% ha uh, has to be uh, a match from the town to be awarded financing from uh, the State Infrastructure Bank. So I have, I've spoken to uh, the bank today. They have, this, uh, they have assigned um, one of their investment bankers and they were to reach out to uh, me today, but that, that didn't occur. I'm going to send this draft application for their review. Um, and they will um, do a review and, and make, make any necessary changes to this. We're looking at a 30 year term uh, for this loan. And um, I anticipate bringing back to you a final application for your next meeting on uh, January 18th. Thanks, Tom. Tom, do you remember what the length, the life, the lifespan of the new culvert would be? It's in, um, it's in excess of 40 years. Uh, Robert said it's aluminum structure and pre precast. Um, he said in excess of 40 years. Okay. Anything else on this? If not, uh, let's see here. Um, I just want to, to add to this, Brad, uh, that uh, at the last budget meeting you folks had, you asked for a, a draft article that would appear on yep. at for town meeting. Sent one to in as part of this package in early noon, and I sent another revised. I, I got Rob Helper, spoke to Rob Helper today, and he tweaked the language a little bit. Um, so if anybody, and I think I set that out about 4.15 this afternoon, and I, I put in red what Rob's comments were <clears throat> on that draft. So if you, you'll, you'll be seeing, if there's no comments on that, you'll be seeing that this would be added to, to Rosemary's package for your uh, select board's consideration on January 18th. Okay. So Rob just wanted it uh, over a period not to exceed the 30 years? Right. Okay. And let's see here. That's, um, You'll have this on the next agenda for uh, with the um, hopefully approval or at least the uh, have the uh, infrastructure bank look at it. I'll have that, and then also that article will be part of Rosemary's warning that you folks need to approve to to get send to the printers for town meeting. Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, taken, um, so uh, the town center zoning official map, capital improvement plan. So just that, this is just a reminder that uh, there's a public hearing scheduled 
the select board is holding a public hearing. The Planning Commission held their public hearing in uh, December, mid-December, I think the 15th, if I recall. Um, uh, they have forwarded to the select board. You guys reviewed it at your last meeting. And this is just a reminder that at 6.30 p.m., uh, the select board will be holding a public hearing on those three items. We, we've um, uh, put it on front porch form. We've received one, uh, one comment uh, from the uh, chairman of the uh, Development Review Board, Bob Warnick. He would like to, to make a minor change or uh, uh, make a minor addition. So you'll be hearing that uh, minor addition that you're hearing on January 18th. Okay. Um, the Conservation Commission Select Board hearing the last application that's known as Space Saver. Reminder again that on Wednesday, January 20th at 6 p.m., the uh, Conservation Commission the Select Board will be ho holding a joint hearing to, uh, in effect, take testimony on the VAST application. Um, um, there, there, I sent the uh, that meeting agenda out to folks. Um, I there is a, a, a at the end of that meeting a uh, I, I put in a discussion time for the select board and the conservation commission. Um, uh, my uh, my sense my druthers are that we come out of that meeting with a decision on this fast application that this should be the final meeting. Um, I think the the. I've, I've spoken to the chair of the Conservation Commission. I, I think he's of the same mindset. But again, this is just a reminder to to you of that public hearing on January 20th. Okay. Um, a decision to hold pre-town meeting. Something that Rosemary. Um, asked me to, to bring to, to the select board. You may recall that uh, at your last meeting, you, the select board made a decision to, to do everything via Australia ballot. Uh, and rather than hold a, a live town, town meeting, she just uh, requests with a decision on the pre-town meeting. That, that was always a live session as well. If, if a pre-town meeting is needed, it would end up having to be a virtual meeting. Uh, I asked her her, her uh, sense of it. She says you only have 10 or 12 people uh, uh, attend pre-town meeting. And so if that's the case, uh, I, I offer that it may not be warranted this year and that the pre-town meeting uh, be, be canceled. Have a motion on this? I make the motion to cancel the pre town meeting this year. Is there a second? I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Along with that, Brad, I, uh, Rosemary sent to the select board today a draft of her her uh, warning notice for for town meeting. Uh, she just would like if you have any questions on that to get back to her. She realizes that uh, the select board will be meeting again on the 18th and make a final vote on that warning language. But if there's something in her draft that she sent out today, she just would appreciate if, if members would get back to her and she'd make the changes in advance till the 18th. Well, uh, no change, a pre-town meeting to discuss our articles to be voted by Australian ballot. I guess that's out the window now. Right. I don't see any other changes for it. Um, so we're going to vote by Australian ballot on February the 27th. Yep. 
on sa on Saturday, February the twenty seventh. Everybody's good with that. I'm trying to find it here real quick. Is that the date you did it last year? No. No, we did it on town meeting day, March fourth. Okay. So yeah, this I is think, a. I think she there's, said there's about always March been. Second. Oh, March second. Oh, there's always been a um, a uh, a discussion about uh, having it on a Saturday instead of during the week. Sure. And. I hate to use this as the uh, as the as the trial of it, but I think it makes a certain amount of sense. You know, we can always take and hope uh, do this again next year and see right. if if we do have a uh, are able to have a another town a, a town meeting again as we become accustomed to, and then take and do it that year too. But this will be a just a change. Right. Okay. Do we have a concurrence on this? Um, Tom, this has to be voted on what on the next by the next time. The 18th. Time. The 18th. Yeah. So I don't have a calendar here. Um, when's our next scheduled meeting? The 18th. It's two weeks from today. Okay. So um, if we, if you have, if you can. Uh, Probably go over this and see if there's anything you pick up on. Then we can take and uh, you can discuss it on the 18th. Uh, okay. And let's see here. Minutes for December the 7th, 2020. Make the motion to approve the minutes of December 7th, 2020. Second. Okay, here's second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Aye. Um, let's see here. Approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. You're on mute, Flo. Thank you. I just saw that as well. Thank you. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 21-13 for payroll from December 6, 2020 to December 19, 2020 paid on December 23rd, 2020 in the amount of $43,747.23. Also payable warrant 21-G14 with checks 20,794 to 20,828 in the amount of $86,130.19. Here a second. I will second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And uh, round table flow. None from me tonight, but thank you. John? Uh, I'm just wondering how we're doing with uh, the officer recruitment. Do we still have positions open? I know that we did some internal shifting, but uh, I was just looking for a status on uh, where we were. If no one knows, I can ask the chief, but. I believe we do still have some positions open. At least I saw them advertised. So I believe okay. we do, but I don't know that for an absolute 100% fact. Okay. And the second thing, um, Tom, I saw your email with uh, additional resumes. Um, we don't have any of those scheduled yet, do we? Okay. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Thank you. Justin? Uh, I don't have any, well, I guess you guys are all well aware that the uh, Riverton Fire Department got broken into. Um, they they put Wi-Fi over there and they do have some security over there, but other than that, that's all I have to share. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Um, 
Anything for executive session, uh, Tom? Excuse me, Brad. I, I've got a couple items for a round table, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, uh, two things. I, I received recently some correspondence from, from VTRANS uh, concerning the Rao Hill, and, and particularly the seasonal closing of Rao Hill. Um, on the VTRANS map, um, they don't show a seasonal closing of Rao Hill. And they are suggesting that the select board, uh, if they haven't already done it, and, and she pointed to me to maybe the select board did it in 1973, so I may find something. But uh, if, if the select board hasn't done it, to do an, uh, an official action to, to um, call that section of Rao Hill that's seasonally closed in class four road, we do it by policy. I sent her the town policy that calls that out, um, but they said they still need this extra um, legal piece. It's it's a public hearing and, and such, assuming it wasn't done in, in 1973. So I'm just gonna follow up with that. So you may see that on your next meeting on January 18th. Um, um, uh, the other piece I have is is uh, setting another date for for the select board to to meet and discuss the budget. I think you you folks found it productive to do that outside of a regular scheduled select board meeting. Um, uh, Diane and I and I would like to offer the um, Wednesday, uh, January sixth, this coming Wednesday at six p.m. If if folks are schedules uh, war, uh, make them available for that day. I have a, available. I have a meeting until 6.30 that night. I'll be gone. I have, I have medical um, appointments that day that are out of state, so it's, I'm out. I can't hear, we can't hear you, Tom, or I can't. 6.45 then on Wednesday? I can do that. Works for me. I can as well. I believe I could have done that. I'm just, we're just trying to get this finalized for everybody. So, um, uh, so I'll, I'll warn that tonight and get that warning out for 6.45 on the uh, January, Six. That, that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, anything on uh, executive session? Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Yep. Yeah. All those in favor? Hi. We're adjourned. Bye. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too.